how you want your mother. We baptize you that John did Jesus. The Jordan. We baptize the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost.
Hallelujah. He says, come on and clap your hands with me. Come on and do your dance for God. Come on and lift up your voice and sing unto him with the highest of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for the worship team this morning for putting some fire in the house today. Amen. We thank you for that. Come on, let's stand to our feet this morning and let's praise God from all, from all the blessings flow. Every creature here below. Praise Him above. We have any hope. Praise God the Son and Holy Ghost. Let's sing it with one voice together. Show us the light again this year 
Help us to see it with the eyes of those who saw the coming of Christ all those years ago. Remind us of hope and love and peace. Convert us from our dark and selfish ways into people of the kingdom. And give us a mission in the world to make straight the ways of our Lord and to exalt the poor and unfortunate before his coming again. Everyone together. With our great glory, come, Jesus our Lord, Emmanuel. We all look through open ears, open minds, and open hearts. We come to receive the blessings God has in store for us in this season of waiting. Amen. So the season of waiting, it is something that says the wait is over. Walk into your season. This is the season. So if you receive the gift, why don't you open it this Christmas? Open the gift. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Open the gift today. Good morning, Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. <clears throat> On this second Sunday in Advent, may the spirit of hope and anticipation fill our hearts. Let us journey together in reflection and preparation for the joyous season that lies ahead, the celebration of Christ's birth. At this time, I would like to acknowledge any visitors. Do we have any visitors this morning? If so, please stand. Alrighty, no visitors this morning. Looks like we're all family here. So again, good morning and God bless. Good morning. I want you to turn and take a look at the neighbor next to you this morning. And look at the other neighbor. You don't have anybody there. If not, tap the person in front of you this morning and say, you know what? Welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. Just say that. See, how you doing? How you been? What's going on? You all right? So whatever you need, it's in the house this morning. So take a look around and who, who's in the building this morning. Whatever you need, it's in the house today. Whether it's a prayer, it might be a gift. Somebody might put something in your hand. You never know. I don't know. But we all get together, one body in Christ. Sometimes it's good to speak to the person next to you. You know, we'll sit there and we won't say nothing. Amen. But this morning you did. Maybe you could just smile at that person. You know, just like that song says, if I can't say a word, I just wave my hand. So some of you might just need to wave your hand this morning. That's okay too. But put a smile on your face this morning. This morning. They might they might they might want to give you something, but they didn't see. Well, wait, I don't know. She might not feel it that good. But maybe if you put a smile on your face, they'll be like, oh yeah, that's what I was. I'm going to give it to you. Okay. So you have to receive the blessing. So remember I say, open the gift. That's what we're going to do this season. We're going to open the gift. And we're going to use it this year. So you'll be ready for the new year. We, we're not waiting for day one. We, day one starts now. Amen. Amen. So we're going to our announcements this morning. And I want you to take a look at your bulletin if you don't have one. See the ushers and make sure that you get one this morning with our calendar of events. We want to thank you for our youth department. We're doing an awesome job with our youth uh, yesterday. I understand we had a wonderful time, so let's give them a hand clap. That's a lot of work. Amen. That would be good if that was for me. But this is for our youth, so come on, put your hands together. For our youth, for our youth workers, that's a lot of work. Amen. We thank you. Thank you for your work and diligence on uh, with that today. You see here, you will see here that the Florida Journal Baptist Convention Midwinter Board meeting is coming up in St. Augustine, December 10th through the 13th. And our youth department, their holiday craft activities, 12 to 2 p.m., December 17th. And also to the Youth Department Christmas Play, 6 p.m. December 21st. 
So here's an announcement. Here's a way. Maybe you thought uh, you didn't have money in your pocket, but if you paid for the cruise, it's been canceled, and you can get reimbursed. So make sure you see Sister Carolyn Donaldson for your reimbursement. So the cruise for December has been canceled. If you have paid already, please see Sister Carolyn Donaldson to reimburse. And guess what? If we're still in December, so if you haven't paid your assessment, your $128, you might tell her, I'll apply it to my assessment for the year. I'm gonna blink on that one. Let me, let me look over here. If you, if you haven't paid your 120 assessment and you're gonna get reimbursed, maybe you might use that towards your assessment for 2023, amen? Okay, let me move on. <laughs> uh, please remember, please remember at the bottom, and it's in red, I just said that. And I want to, and it is in your program, but I want to read it out loud for you. The second candle on the Advent wreath represents peace. Like the first candle, it is also purple, often called the Bethlehem candle. The second Advent candle reminds of us of Mary and Joseph's journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem before Mary gave birth to Jesus. Building on the meaning of the prophecy candle, the second candle recalls after that of all the division, the destruction, the dispersion of the kingdom in the Old Testament. There might finally be peace on earth. Jesus is coming, and so is his kingdom of peace. It's Advent night, the second candle, on Sunday, December the 10th. Amen. So this is the Advent season. You don't know what that means. It means the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that represents that for us today. So please, stand to your feet this morning, and we're changing the hymn this morning. We're going to do Joy to the World, 208. So look at that joy to the world, 208. Everybody stand. Everybody standing. 208, joy to the world. We're going to sing together.
give God a great hand clap of praise. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Give God a great a great hand clap of praise. If God's been good to you in this Advent season, come on, let's give him a praise in this place. All right. All right, just before our choir come, uh, we have a special guest. Uh, who's here, and I want him to come very expeditiously before he, I know he has to go to other churches in Coconut Grove. We have Dr. Hanshby, who's here today, to talk to us about our, our health and our heart. The ushers are passing around, so who's going to pass uh, what we call Heart First Health Sermon. Uh, he's going to come. Come on, Doc. Let's get around and our black doctor. Come on. Thank you, Dr. Good morning, y'all. Man, it's an honor to be here. Amen. It really is. You know when you walk into a space and you just feel like you're at home? I felt that when I walked in here. You guys have a great family-oriented vibe. What do they call that? I think they call it a feng shui. Feng shui. Yeah. We call that a church. <laughs> But uh, and you know why? All right, we're gonna talk about the heart today, y'all. Just a little bit about me. My name is uh, again Dr. Bernard Ashby. I'm a vascular cardiologist. I have an office off of Bird Road. I am a proud Florida boy, born in Jackson. That's my that's that's my that's my claim to fame. Yeah. <laughs> um. Did my training in New York and D.C. prior to coming back home. It's a pleasure to be here. So, so I'm going to put you on a mess for real quick. All right. First of all, it's, it's red like the, is that a theme or something? <laughs> huh? You got this, you know? Oh. I'm loving the red because it's so apropos. We're talking about the heart. So, put you on a mess for real quick. First question, you gotta raise your hand, okay? Don't blurt it out. I give a high five to whoever can tell me what heart failure is. A lot of people think they know what heart failure is, but they don't. And, and you gotta raise your hand. <laughs> Anyone? So, Answer I got them back, and the answer you gave me, I'm gonna give you guys 85. A B, yeah. <laughs> so in general terms, that, that just, it just means that the heart's not doing its job. Okay? So in traditional terms, as you, as you framed it, it's when the heart's not pumping enough blood. That, that means that you have a weak heart or it's not doing its job. And you're right. But I wouldn't say pump blood, I would just say it's not doing the job. It's not able to keep up with the metabolic demands of the body. <laughs> you can't keep up with the, part, the, the metabolic demands of the body. So your heart doesn't necessarily need to be weak to be in heart failure. And that's something that trips a lot of people up. Because I have patients that get them into the hospital and they're like, I got heart failure. When in fact, they have bad kidneys. Because if the kidney's not working, then the heart can't do the job. That's a form of heart failure. I don't like the terminology, I don't, I don't like the way they name it, but the heart's job is to offload the blood and pump it to the thir- through the circulatory system. And uh, when it doesn't do its job, the blood starts backing up, you start gaining fluid. Um, so some of the signs of heart failure are things like weight gain, um, shortness of breath, Swelling, particularly in the legs, that, that could be some of the earliest signs of heart failure. FYI. So, uh, my prize pupil behind me said, Black arteries. Right answer, wrong question. Meaning that the most common cause of heart failure is blocked arteries. And that's an important point because the heart although it pumps blood to the entire body, so every organ tissue in the body has a pipe that goes to it, 
and those are called arteries. The heart, even though it's pumping blood, that blood doesn't nourish it. Just like every other organ, it needs its own pipes to supply it. Those are called the coronary arteries. And when those arteries, which are on the surface of the heart, get blocked, that can cause heart failure. And that is the, the most common cause of heart failure is coronary artery disease, which can lead to a blocked artery, which can cause something called a heart attack, or a fancy way of saying that is myocardial infarction. Myocardial is a fancy way of saying heart muscle, and infarction means death, MI, okay? And so in America, the most common cause of death and disability in the United States is atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. And that's just a fancy way of saying gunk in the pipes. So the next question probably is like, what causes gunk? Well, those, those are the risk factors that we talk about, okay? So if you have high blood pressure, you can build up gunk in the pipes. If you smoke cigarettes, you will get gunk in the pipes. I want to stop right there because a lot of people associate smoking with cancer and really the majority of individuals that smoke cigarettes die from cardiovascular events. All right, so you smoke, it irritates the arteries, you develop plaque or atherosclerosis or gunk. Diabetes, the most common reason why diabetics pass away is from gunk in the pipes. That sugar in the blood causes gunk. If you don't move, more gunk. If you, eat, if you don't eat right, more gunk. And so, we gotta get back to the basics. So how do you prevent heart failure? You gotta move your body, you gotta exercise. The, the more you exercise, the, the, the better your heart works. The less gunk you form in the pipes. Certain foods, preserved foods, in particular. So, natural is always better. This is an important point. Because we've gotten far off on a cliff with all these pills and all this stuff, and nothing beats nature, okay? So fruits and vegetables are your best friend. Less plaque in your arteries. Sunshine is your best friend. Fresh air is your best friend. And again, if you have any of the risk factors that I mentioned, including high cholesterol, if you lower those, you're much less likely to get dunked in the pipes and heart failure as well. And so just one last point, just like pretty much every illness in the U.S., black folks get it the worst and get it the most. So heart failure, black men are 70% more likely than white women to get heart failure. Black women are 50% more likely than white women to get heart failure. I mean, you can pick any disease, right? Like cancer, COVID, it affects our community at a higher clip. And so, it's just important for us to be on the lookout for these things, and I appreciate that you guys gave me the time to speak to you. And if you ever want to come by to my office, I take most insurances, but even if I don't take your insurance, if you want me to review your records, just to make sure that you're on the right meds and that your doctor's doing right by you, I will gladly do it because I'm, the village raised me, and I'm always going to get back. Thank you. Come on, y'all can do better than that. You would have had to pay a copay to get all that information out there. You would have had to get a, a, a request from another doctor to see another doctor to get all of that information. And I want to say, Macedonia, I know sometimes we say, now what they got to do, they let them clock service. I, I purposely had him to come today because, first of all, he just told you, African Americans die mostly from all of those diseases. And then secondly, when we have a health fair, nobody comes but me, Sister Will, uh, uh, Sister Wallace, Sister Brown. I can name it on my hand. And our, our health is serious. Our health is serious. And that's Dr. Ansby. Dr. Ansby, uh, he, give, give him, Carol has his information. We'll give, he, he offered to come over to Macedonia a couple weeks ago, and I did not hesitate. He could have preached if he wanted to because our health is serious. Uh, over the last month since November, I have formalized at least four people 
from health issues, dealing with the heart. And I'm not talking about older saints, I'm talking about young saints, 40, 50, 35. So we have to take care of our health. Our health is important. Is that all right? Yeah. And, and Macedonia, while I'm on a health kick, uh, we have to keep our church spiritually healthy. And the only way we can keep it spiritually healthy is that we have to play a part in our, our ministry in every aspect. Not just at 11 o'clock, but even in our church meetings, in our Sunday school, our Bible study, our mission department, our choir, our ushers, our cleaning department, our ministering department. We have to take charge and take our church back so that we are doing what God has required us to do. And watch this, even financially, we got to play a part in our ministry. Y'all got quiet. All right, all right, all right. All, all of the students from Francis S. Tucker that go to Francis S. Tucker, please stand up for me. Please stand up, please stand up. If you go to Francis Tucker, please stand up. All right, God bless you. On last week, I had the privilege of being the principal for the day. Someone said they didn't want me to be the principal the next day. And I won't look at them. And, and, and she said that because the principal was doing such a wonderful job at Francis Tucker. And she, we went into every one of these students' class and we talked. And the principal had nothing but great things to say about Macedonia members. So let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. I know I'm missing one, Maria's granddaughter. Is that Trinity? I'm, I'm missing her. They're saying she's doing an excellent job as well in Francis Tucker. So we want to celebrate our youth. God bless you so much. You know you God bless you. Come on, Fire. Give us some Christmas music that makes you I feel like we're in the Christmas spirit.
let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ, the Lord, your Savior and Lord. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, now and forever. Jesus, Jesus, it's, it's something about the name Jesus. And when you say it, it just, it's something just happened on the inside of you. No matter how you feel, when you say Jesus, <laughs> you just can't say it one time. You just gotta say Jesus. <laughs> Saints of old, when they got down on their knees, they said, Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain. Jesus. Somebody know what I'm talking Lord about. Jesus. I see you, Sister Wallace, Sister Widow. I remember those days of old. Right here, kneeled right here in the front of the altar. I remember I used to say, what are you saying? A child likes to keep my hand of God to glory of God. I thought they were saying, Ray Charles, over and over again. But they was talking about the one and only Jesus Christ. If you want a rock star or a superstar, call on Jesus. If you want something to happen in your life, call on Jesus. And then when you've done all, having done all, and you stood, call on Jesus. Now I'm giving you some time to get your tithes and offerings together. I don't know, I'm not just saying stuff up here. <laughs> We're calling on the name of Jesus. Who's going to supply your needs? According to his riches and glory, he is. It says, give, not of necessity, but God loves a prompt to do it. And I say hilarious giver, because sometimes you got to laugh. But God said, give, give. You say, give what? <laughs> give my time to the and my offers? Yes. So let's get ready, ushers, so for our tithes and our offerings this morning. Come before the Lord. And as they come follow the instructions of the ushers this morning, give. Give. Come on, let's get some giving news.
verse. I want to read from the New King James Version of the Bible. It says, Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples. And he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. And as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake. And they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging in of the waters. And they ceased. And there was a calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the waters. And they obey him. You may be seated in the presence of God. If you'd allow me to preach from the topic, if you'd allow me to preach from this topic, if you'd allow me to preach from this topic, praising God. In the midst of a storm. Praising God in the midst of a storm. The reality about life is that at some point in our lives, we will face some type of trial. Mom would always say, if you haven't faced a storm in your life, just keep living. And you will surely face a storm. The old deacon that great fellowship would sing a song, if you ain't had no rain in your life, just, just wait a while. Whether it's natural or spiritual, you will face a storm. You may face an actual storm, like a blizzard, a hurricane, or a typhoon. You may face a mental or spiritual storm. Some of you, I'm sure, have stories of survival to tell because you are still here today, alive and well, through the grace of God. Am I making sense? It, it might be a storm that lasts for years, or it may be a storm that comes every few months. But we will all have to weather some type of storm during our lifetime. Sometimes the trials are so hard, we contemplate giving up. We shouldn't give up because there is hope and a way of escape. There is a way to handle the stresses and adverse adversities of a life without throwing in the towel. Look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor before they nod off go to sleep. Look at them and say, don't give up. Oh, that neighbor already looking funny. Look at your other neighbor and say, don't give up. Don't give up, don't give up. From reading the text, from reading the text, we know that Jesus gets into a boat with his disciples. He gives them direction to cross over to the other side. But while Jesus was taking a nap, a windstorm with raging wave threatens to sink the boat. Almost all of the disciples were experienced fishermen. And they had been fishing on this particular lake all of their lives. Someone would wonder how in the world they got themselves into this fix. Shouldn't they have known what to do? How did they find themselves in this situation? You ever found yourself 
in a storm and you trying to figure out how you ended up in it? You're, you're driving, you're driving, and, and everything is nice and sunny. The weather couldn't be better, and then all of a sudden you go through open lines. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And this lightning and the flashing and the thunder is rolling, and there's a downpour, and you can barely see what is in front of you. You wonder where it came from. There, there were no signs of rain in Coconut Grove, but right there in the city of Oklahoma. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. And just like in life, everything is going good. And then all of a sudden, you find yourself facing a situation and you don't even know how you got it. Some storms couldn't see, you couldn't see coming, but there are some storms you could have avoided in the first place. There are some decisions that we made that caused us to go through some of the storms in our life. Can I preach today? Now, now scholars, scholars say, scholars say that the late the disciples and Jesus were traveling on was an unusual lake. The lake sat like a bowl on the edge of the desert, buried deep in the dirt about 700 feet below sea level. And when the sun evaporated the surface of the water, the moist heat would rise up. About 30 miles east of the lake, uh, there were cool breezes. Depending on the way the wind would blow, the cool air that crashed into the hot air which lifted from the lake would create what we call the perfect prescription for an instant storm. The waves would rise six feet high. And just like uh, just a little bit of different things going on in your life sometimes can create the perfect storm. You lost your job. You come home and find the eviction notice on your door. You try to crank your car, it won't crank. Your spouse wants a divorce. Your children are acting up. And you find out your health condition uh, is not doing good all at the same time. Can I preach today? A little bit of this and a little bit of that can create the perfect environment for a storm in your life. The winds of life start blowing and the waters start raging. The boat starts to get a little rocky, shaky, and it looks like you may not make it out of this one alive. You ever been there? But there is a God who can deliver you out of any circumstance or trial. Look at, look at Job. He lost his children, his animal. He had boils on his skin. And his wife was acting up telling him to curse God and die. Job still gave God praise despite his circumstance. God blessed Job after all that he had. He blessed him. Do you believe God will bless you? Jesus is sleeping through. He's taking a nap through all this turmoil and the bad weather. He was in what we call a good sleep. You ever been in a good sleep? And then somebody wakes you up for something that wasn't, oh my God, important. Now you can't even go back to sleep. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. The disciples started to panic and woke Jesus up out of his good sleep to tell him the waters is filling the boat and they're going to drown. Notice how they didn't turn the boat to go back, but went to Jesus for help and instructions when the situation was out of their control. I'm trying to help somebody. We should turn to Jesus for help when our, we are facing trials that seem impossible to overcome. 
Don't give up and don't go back to where you came from. You came too far from where you started from. Y'all need to help me breathe. You need to fight through because the storm will eventually pass. After Jesus rebuked the winds and the raging waters, and Drea, he asked all the disciples where their faith was. And I want to ask you, Macedonia, where is your faith? The Bible says if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. How many of y'all believe that today? You can speak to your situation today and command everything to line up the word of God. Yeah, you can speak to your sick. You can talk to your health and tell your health to get in line. You can talk to your mind and say, stop playing tricks on me. You can talk to your kids. You, you can look at your car and say, I know you're free. You may not have a gas in the tank, but you don't pray. You have to have faith. You don't have to be defeated by your circumstances. You can speak to your storm today and command those waves and winds to stop. Now, I know some of y'all think I'm talking about personal storms. You think I'm talking about the actual weather. But sometimes you can speak to somebody who you know is a storm. You can tell that storm, get behind you. I know what kind of games you're trying to play on me. The devil ain't trying to use you, but I, I, I see it and I rebuke the devil. You gotta leave me alone, Satan. Every now and then you gotta tell Satan to leave you alone. Because he's gonna do his job. He wakes up every morning to do his job and that's to defeat you. To turn you away from your purpose in God. Don't let your emotions take control. Don't let it take control of the panic. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor, say, relax, relax. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah, it's going to be okay. Just, just like God was in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and the baby God, he'll be in the midst of whatever fiery trial you're going through. You will come out looking better than you did when you gathered. The disciples, disciples were even more afraid and amazed after they witnessed this miracle. They saw, they saw Jesus heal people, but hadn't witnessed him controlling the elements of the earth. They asked, who is this? Who could this be? Because only God could calm the winds and the water. Yeah. Psalms 89 says, O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord? Your faithfulness also surrounds you. You rule the raging of the sea. When it waves rise, you still them. Not only does God have the power to calm the storms at the sea, but he can calm the storms in your life too. Look, look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, whatever storm you're going through today. Yeah, Jesus knows. He's with you. He's with you. He's with you. Yeah, they're, they're calm, calm, calm. Yeah, we, we should always give God praise. And every trial we go through, we ought to give Him praise. We must learn how to praise God in the midst of our storm. It is by praising God in the midst of the storm that we find strength. We need to continue moving forward. If you praise God during the storm, that means that you are taking him through it with you. And when you take him through the storm with you, everything will work together for your good. I'm almost out here. Y'all look at that. Some of y'all say, perhaps I left the greens on the stove. 
the, the first thing you, the first thing you need to to know what you need to do is you got to seek God's face. Get into the presence of God with humility and seek His face. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, seventh chapter, fourteen verse says, "If my people, I thought y'all knew, who will call by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn." Your wicked ways, then we will not get from heaven and we'll forgive their sin and we'll. But you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pray. You gotta seek his face. But some of y'all do the praying, you do the seeking, but you don't never do this. You gotta turn from your. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mama was saying, son, son, you can't put all and water together. You got to separate. You got to separate. Either you do water first or you do oil. You can't mix. Then will I hear from heaven. You got to read. You got to study the Bible. You got to pray morning, noon, and night. And I know sometimes we say it out of habit, but we're in the last days where we have to pray morning, noon, Tonight, you gotta make your request known to him. You gotta pass sometimes. You gotta turn down the play. Oh, you're preaching to me, baby. Yeah, you gotta turn down. You gotta pass sometimes. If you want results, you gotta pass sometimes. You you can't go get that Pepsi uh, at the church. You gotta pass sometimes. I know you want that kind of kid in that. Oh, y'all don't do the whole thing. You gotta pass in that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta pass on the ramble. I'm preaching to myself. You, sometimes you gotta to the ground. You gotta let that Popeye thing out for a little while and talk to Jesus. I want you to know that fasting is a way to show God sincerity while you are seeking His face. It was customary for Hebrew kings to announce the fast in extreme situations. The city of district or the entire kingdom fasted. Depending on how severe the emergency was, everybody fasted. And sometimes we go through things as a family. So we need everybody fasting and praying and going before God. For his mercy and his help. Can I preach? Yeah. Same thing, same thing. I'm going to the truck now. You gotta give God praise. Yeah. Exalt God. Amen. And give him the highest praise yeah. that you know how to give. Yeah. Sing praises to him. Amen. Sing praises to his name. Okay. And glorify him. In Psalms 150 says to praise him. In his sanctuary. Oh, no, he did. Praise him, the mighty permanent. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellence and greatness. We should acknowledge God for his sovereign power, his wisdom, his kindness, and his grace. God inhabits the praises of his people. Is there anybody going to help me praise today? He dwells in the midst of praise. The, the Bible says, well, two or three, I'm gathered in his name. He, he'll be right there. Is there anybody in Macedonia want to help me praise God? Do you have a reason to give God praise? Not only do you have to praise him, or hope him but you got to thank God in advance for the victory. Thank God for the victory. And has already been won through Jesus Christ. Yet we should declare the victory over the storms in our lives. We will not be defeated because God is in the midst of our trap. We should speak those things that are not as though they were. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So speak life over your issue. And don't be negative about it. 
have it all well. You got to keep thanking God in advance for the victory that is already won. When the disciples had done all they knew to do, they called on the name of Jesus. And he heard their cry. He delivered them from the windstorm. And he can deliver you too. How do you know he can deliver you? Yeah, don't faint, don't give up, just hold on. Every now and then, I know, I both get a little rocky. Does the wind start to blow from every direction? Everything seems to be going wrong. The water start to surge six feet high in your life. We start to get a little seasick because of the circumstances we're going through. The situation becomes bigger than us, so we need to call Jesus for some help. My brothers and my sisters, I dare you today to give God a praise in the midst of your storm and see what will happen. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up the standard against him. Can I get a witness in here? You don't have to be fearful and you don't need to panic because Jesus, he is with you.
to heal or me to deliver. He'll give you the desires of your heart. See, you have not because you ask God. So we ask God today that His Spirit will rest on the lives of His people. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for your anointing power that falls fresh in this place. We thank you, God, for your love, your kindness, and your tender mercies on today, God. God, someone came with a hung down here. God, they came with a lowly heart today. So we ask now that you would increase their lives, God. Increase their favor. God, pick them up, lift them up, lift up their heart down here, God. We thank you now. God, we make our request known to you today. God, we seek your face today, God. For supernatural healing power. God, if there's anyone who's sick today, God, that's under the sound of my voice, God. We ask now to reveal them right now. That you will deliver them. God, we, we know that you are a doctor in the sick one. We know that you have medicine in the hill of your God. And so, God, we, we ask now that you heal. God, we, we say a special prayer of healing for Sister Mona's father on today, God. God, for, for the ones who are in the hospital, God. Sister Anderson, who, who has been going through, we speak healing, God. God, we speak healing over Sister Andrea tonight, God. God, let her know that she has work to do. And you're not done with her yet. God, increase her, her faith right now. God, the blood of Jesus, God, let it, God, let it cover her, God. God, we, we speak now that, that when she goes to the next doctor report, God, that it will be better than the last. We claim the victory. God, you said, we can move mountains. Tell mountains to get out of our way. And so we speak today, God. We speak healing. We speak healing. God, we thank you for allowing Sister Little to return to church, God. God, we thank you for keeping watch over her. God, keeping her mind in perfect peace, God. God, we know that you are the master here, But we thank you. We worship you today, God. God, God, whatever the issue is, whatever the situation may be, God, your people are here at the altar. They're crying out to you. They're calling your name, God. They're petitioning your throne, God. God, we ask that you will grant their, God, their request, God. God, that you would give them the desires of their heart. God, we ask now that you cover our kids. God, we know the devil is trying to, to walk on the school campuses all across the world and, and take out of our kids, God, but we cover them right now. The devil can't have their mind. God, the devil can't have their bodies, God. They, they belong to you, God. God, we, we pray that we ask you that you cover them, God. Let no hurt, harm, and danger come upon them. God, we thank you for your anointing. That fall fresh in the lives of your people. God, we thank you for this church, God. God, let this church be a light to the community, God. God, let people be saved, delivered, God. When they step onto the property, God, that their lives will instantly change. They'll be saved and delivered and set free. God, we thank you. God, we worship you today. We we give you all praise. If we had 10,000 tongues, it, it wouldn't be enough to say thank you, God. God, we, we, we love you today. God, we love you today. God, we thank you now for Sister Marcia. God, God, as she will travel back to Brazil, God, that you keep her covered. God, keep her family covered, God. God, we thank you, God, for the time that she was here with us, God. We, God, we thank you for the spirit, God, that we Pray now that you calm my spirit, God, 
as she traveled back. God, let people be saved in Brazil through what she have obtained here in the United States, God. We worship you today, God. Keep her, God, keep her mom in perfect peace. We ask for healing for her mom, God. God, keep her son covered. How many you love? We thank you, God. We thank you, God. God, we ask that you open up her mind, her ears, that she can receive more of you. That she can declare to a dying world that you still live, you, you're still able. We thank you, God. God, let your anointing favor fall over her life, God. There's a work to be done. And we say thank you, God. We thank you for your healing power. Keep her right now, God. God, we love you today. God, we thank you for loving us. Even though we didn't deserve it, God. We say thank you. God, we, we, we know, God, that it's you. You are the reason why we live, who we have our being. We say thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Speak life, speak life over our family. 
And she has a testimony to tell, and one day I'll let you tell it. I don't want them in our business. We'll let you come back and tell the testimony that God is the healing God. And he has a huge way on how he heals us and delivers us from our problems. God bless you. Say something for you. Just say something. Thank you so much. I don't, I don't have enough number of words to explain what is happening to me since I crossed that door. Uh, I, I, I'm not able to even understand how much God loves us. I never knew that it is possible somebody worship God like you. Please teach me I want to worship God. I want to come back to keep learning how much, you know, in your hearts, you really, when you come here, you really want to make God happy. For all my life, I was trying to get God attention to make me happy. But here, you really want to make God happy. And I pray that I can come back to keep learning. <laughs> because the most important is make Father God happy. Because He gave us His soul. Right? So it's much more important learn from Him how to make Him happy. Because when you make him happy, like you make him happy with his worship, of course, he will make you happy. You will be already happy and blessed because you are happy making him happy. And all other... Keep preaching now. And all... He will be so happy because you are pleasing him that higher level. How could he hold something that he sees you need? He will come and he will supply every each one of your needs. Because you make him so happy, it's his pleasure to make you happy. Then. So pray God that I can come back quickly because I have to still learn here until the Lord graduate me here in this worship temple. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I gotta ask you one question before you leave. Can pass the baby preach. Yes, you will. Come on. All the men that all the men stand as we be dismissed. All the men that we be dismissed. This looks the Lord. Again, we will have Bible study on Wednesday night at seven. We'll be in in St. Augustine for our midwinter conference. Was Minister Moody is going to preach? And teach our Bible study just like Pastor Bailey. She's going to follow my blessing plan. Uh, she's going to do what God has ordained her to do. Uh, so that we can continue to have Bible study. Because I know we're going to the holiday season. And ain't none of y'all going to show up with Bible study in a few weeks. I don't even act like that. It'll be Venus to the Brown and Isaac Hippo Bible study. Don't y'all even do me like that. So we want to continue our Bible study. We want to continue our Bible study this week. At 6 o'clock Sunday school, teachers meeting is at 5.30 to 7 o'clock. We'll go 7 to 8 for Bible study. And we'll see everyone here for Bible study at 7 o'clock. At least one day after the year, y'all should come on out. We want you to come to Bible study, and then we'll see you on Sunday. Uh, again, let's let's thank God for Sister Wood being back in the midst of the well, let's thank God for Sister Charlene who's here with us again. God bless you. And, uh, we pray for her strength and her family. And we definitely thank God for Deacon George who all came all the way back from New York. It was cold. He can't handle it like he used to. God bless you so much. Let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. God, we thank you for our eyes and seeing our ears and word. God, we thank you now for traveling. Grace, cover us, guide us, and protect us. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come upon us. God, we will be so careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, present you all this before his presence, with they see that abundant joy. Hence now and forevermore, let everyone who loves the Lord say, Amen. Amen.